Welcome back to week four of our bike maintenance crash course. This week, we're gonna be taking a dive into torque, how it applies to our bikes and why it's important. In previous videos, I've talked about torque a number of times in terms of the force that's applied through our brakes and the force that's applied through our cranks as we pedal our bikes. And torque is a measurement of force, a turning force, not the kind of force they talk about in Star Wars. That's a totally different force, not what we're talking about. God, I've said force a lot of times then, wow. Anyway, back to our bikes. Our bikes feature threaded bolts and threaded components to hold parts together, limit movement, and just generally stop our bikes falling apart. Now, depending on the application of that component, it may well have a large or a small bolt. And if it features a smaller bolt, these are generally an indicator that less force needs to go through it and less force and torque is required. And as such, if we were to apply more torque to that bolt, we not only run the risk of damaging that component and the component that it's holding together, but also damaging the bolt and the thread within it all. And you just don't want any of those problems. Every component and every item has its limitations and torque is a way of measuring that turning force in an accurate way to make sure we don't exceed the limitations of those components. And a good example of this are the bolts on our stem over here if we were to change or replace it for any reason. And to see more about changing the stem on your bike, head to page 202 of the maintenance book. Luckily for us, almost every part of our bikes will have a specific torque setting either stamped or printed onto it. And our stems are another good example of this. I mean, you can see here, six newton meters stamped on the side of my stem. And the reason for the stem particularly having a torque setting such as that is to limit the chance of it slipping or moving when you're steering your bike and also to limit the risk of damaging that steerer tube, many of which are carbon fiber on top end bikes. Not every part on our bikes needs to be as tight as possible. And that's why some components will have a torque range setting. So it could be sort of four to six Newton meters, for example. And in that situation, don't be tempted to add more torque because it's not going to help you out and you just run the risk of damaging that component. So stick to what the manufacturers recommend. Torque settings are there to make sure that component has enough force applied to it to make sure it can do its job correctly. A perfect example of a component on our bikes that doesn't have a specific torque setting is our headset top cap. The whole point of this is to remove any excess free plate in the bearings in our headset and also apply a little bit of preload to those bearings. And when adjusting this bolt, you must have your stem bolts nice and loose, otherwise it's going to have no impact on it whatsoever. You can then make the adjustments to your headset top cap. And in terms of the torque that's applied to this, it's the least amount of torque possible to remove that excess play. So long as there's no play left in there, that's perfectly fine. It doesn't matter whether that's one, two or three Newton meters, but this top cap bolt isn't designed to be done up very tight. Once that excess play is gone, you can then go ahead and do the stem bolts up evenly to their correct torque setting. Like I mentioned earlier, don't go adding a little bit extra on for safety. There's no need whatsoever. So do the stem bolts up nice and evenly to the correct torque setting. And once that is done, it's actually those bolts that are gonna hold everything together, stop it from moving, because once they're tight, that stem top cap bolt doesn't actually have much purpose. Chances are some of you are at home thinking, hold on, my stem or other components don't have any sort of specific torque setting printed or stamped onto them. What on earth can I do? Well, don't worry, don't panic. There is a simple process to fix this here. So what we need to do is apply a little bit of torque to the bolts and gradually increase that to get the desired result that we want. So for our stem, for example, the whole point of doing the bolts up on the stem is to stop it moving independently to our wheel. So I've loosened this off. So look, this is it. No torques applied through the bolts. Oh dear, the stem is moving. So what we want to do is apply enough torque to the bolts to stop that movement that we don't want. So we can take our allo key, gradually apply a little bit of force to these bolts, doing them up evenly as we go, as you would do normally. So you can just apply a little bit of force, a little bit of force there. And then as we're doing this, we can go through and check. So 
Now we can see it's become a little bit more difficult to turn the handlebars independent of the wheel, but it's still not tight enough to make the components secure to the level that we want it. So make sure that the steerer and stem are nice and straight. Then we can apply a little bit of additional torque through the bolts. And like I said, we do this in small incremental stages. So apply a little bit of torque, a little bit of extra torque that side, and a little bit extra through there. So then we can go ahead, recheck this. And we can apply a good bit of force through the handlebars because we want to be safe in the knowledge that there's no way these are going to come loose when we're riding our bike because it'll mean we lose control of our bikes and crash. That's something you definitely want to avoid. So we can check this, nice and firm, look at that. No torque range, no settings, but I know that those stem bolts are tight enough to keep me safe on the bike, perfect. So knowing all of this information and taking into account that hopefully at some point soon, you'll start taking on some more involved maintenance tasks on your bike, it would be a good idea and time to consider investing into a torque wrench. This could be your next tool to add to your collection. This will give you that peace of mind to make sure your bike's nice and safe and you don't run the risk of damaging any of those lovely components on your bike. That's it for week four of our maintenance crash course. Hope you enjoyed finding a bit more information about torque and how it's applied to your bike. And this week's homework is to have a little look over on page 48 of the maintenance book on how to set up your new bike. And there's loads of great examples in here when you could use your new torque wrench. See you next week for episode five.